In this video, I'm going to show you a tool that you absolutely must need to use if you're interested in building Golang CLI applications. Ever since I released Go Blueprint, everybody's been telling me I did such a good job of making these CLI look great. Q Go Blueprint right here, somewhere you'll see on the screen. CLI, there's colors, it's, it's nice, there's options too. But I really want to showcase the tools that are open source and are free that really help make Go Blueprint look so good and be as successful as it is right now. So the very first tool I need you guys to look at is by Charm. The tool is called Bubble Tea, and as it says, the fun, functional, and safe way to build terminal apps, a Go framework based on the Elm architecture. Bubble Tea is well suited for simple and complex term applications, either inline, full window, or a mix of both. But let me dive deeper into what this offers. It's a framework. It's a framework that gives you the ability to do whatever it is you want with their model structure. You can see here, I'm going through so many different examples. You can put a credit card form. There's this composable views. I'm not even sure what that means. A debounce exec, go full screen, glamour. This looks beautiful. Like look, glamour it up. Bang, look at that. But you can even go more and reuse the model structure they provide and the methods built into the framework to do whatever it is you really want to do. But the main kind of selling point of Bubble Tea, the framework is it provides you this model structure that you create this text input model and there's different models for everything you want to build. It could be text input and multiple list, exiting a fancy list. Charm will provide those for you in their bubbles package. And then you use the T from Bubble T framework to actually instantiate and pass those frameworks through your application with some very important methods like the update method and the view method and of course the init method. And another really good functional tool that goes so well with Bubble T is lip gloss. Lip gloss, as they say, style definitions for nice terminal layouts built with TUIs in mind. Essentially, the way I think of this is like the CSS for your CLI. You know, you could create a CLI using Bubble T that is super functional, does some really cool stuff, but you want it to pop. You want to give it that pizzazz and lip gloss is the tool to do it for you. Let me quickly show an example of what you can create using bubble T lip gloss and all the other fundamental tools here. We'll have go blueprint create and bang. There you go. You can put some ask here. It'll ask what's the name of your project. You know, you can say hi YouTube. That's the name of the project. You can pick your library, whatever. But the highlight is the functionality here, the different colors, the color pattern I'm using, the bolding of some, the list I'll choose here. For example, we'll use Chi for, for this framework. We'll go to the next step. You know, what database driver you want to use again it doesn't matter we'll just say postgres we'll press y to confirm and there you go now we'll have the actual project but this is what you can build using these tools so let's actually build something and let me show how you can get started now i want to preface this that we're not going to be writing every line of code line by line this is going to be more so an introduction of how you can copy and paste to get started in writing functional things for your program and what you can couple bubble tea and lip gloss with cobra to really start making some really cool application that you can contribute to or make your own and you know put them open source or closed source whatever it could be that you want to do so here i have an open director there's nothing in here you can ls it's just a go mod because there's a go mod in it but what we're going to actually do is use cobra cli in it and i've made a whole video on cobra before on my youtube channel editor please put my youtube channel like you scroll through it this is like all my videos you know watch them they're good i think they're good i think i make good videos what do you, do you think i make good videos i mean you have to say yes i <laughs> mean so go back here, we'll just go do Cobra CLI in it and your Cobra application is ready at this location. Now, if we do a code dot and open up our Visual Studio code, you can see here that no longer do we just have that go dot mod, but we actually have a bunch of stuff here like this root dot go uh, that really will kick off our application. So now we can get started by installing uh, Bubble Tea and installing Charm as well. All right, so the very first thing that I wanna do is actually add a new file called create.go and we're gonna put this in the package CMD. Now, to get started, we're going to pull in our first import, which is github.com slash SPF 13 Cobra. We can do a go mod tidy, it'll install it for us. And then we're going to actually structure the project. Okay, cool. So this is what Cobra expects the very bare bone of your implementation to look like. And now we're going to really add a lot more to this. But first, let's actually install lip gloss and create some variables for lip gloss to kind of highlight over our title, the things that look kind of nice. So if you go flip back here, this is kind of like how we're going to define these styles right here. Okay, cool. So there is some styles that put for logo style, tip a message style, and ending message style. This is just, you know, pretty bare bone lip gloss impl implementation. The only thing I changed was the color here to match my favorite color, which is that teal that you saw. The first thing I want to do is actually do an, a function in it, which is going to bind our command to the existing Cobra command here. So you do root CMD, and this is defined in the root.go file when you did Cobra CLI in it. You do add command and you're going to put in the variable they declared over on line three or relative line three, line 18 of create command. Now, every time 
time you do Cobra or the name of your application dash create, it will run whatever is defined in this function. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and create two types. We're gonna make one type, which is gonna be our list of options. Uh, this is going to be, you know, nothing too fancy. This is the way I like to write my Go projects. It's gonna be an item of options that can, are just a slice of strings. And then we're gonna do another one, which is just project options, which is also gonna be a struct. It's gonna contain the project name. I'm gonna put that as a string for now, but we're gonna change that in just a bit. And project type, which should also be a string. Now, these are just gonna be placeholders because now we're gonna actually bring in bubble tea and create two separate folders for our text input and the multi input that we're going to implement. Let's go ahead and make a new folder called UI. I'm gonna make another folder called text input. I'm gonna make another one called multi input. And then each of them, I'm gonna make a multi input.go. Go in there, package multi input, perfect. And then go back, create a new one called text input.go and create a new file called package text input. So if we quickly flip back over to our examples, we're essentially just gonna be copying and pasting the example here for text input. And again, for multi input, we're gonna do some slight modifications I'll talk you through. I just don't wanna write the entire code line by line. Uh, well, you'll have this code available for you on GitHub. I think it's more important to understand the concepts that this framework offers as opposed to kind of just watching me type it out and then you kind of regurgitating it. I think it's easier if you just kind of look at it, have a place to start, understand how it conceptually works and then you can do your own thing. All right, so I'm back and I have written out the code. I mostly copy and paste it. You can see it's very similar. I did add a lip gloss style here. Again, this is just lip gloss. I'm kind of just adding what I want with the color. You can modify this. You can look at lip gloss documentation of what you want to add, but I highly recommend you, you use lip gloss. I have a few types here that define for the error message, the output, uh, but really the main thing you want to focus on, and you can you can see I have like my init method, my update method here. I have my view method. You can even go back, you can view them here. The main thing that you want to focus on is defined here on line 52, which is what this is accepting, which is the T dot model struct. And that is what's going to hold kind of the logic surrounding any sort of thing that you use from bubble tea in the framework. Uh, and what these methods do essentially is this initial text input model or, you know, whatever you call it, this is the constructor of your instantiation of the framework uh, for this component. So for here, this is text input. I instantiate it. It's my constructor and it returns this model struct, which typically takes in a text input, error, output, header, this can be whatever you want. But what's most important is to focus on this text input slash model. This is imported from charm bracelet bubbles text input package. Now this charm bracelet bubbles package contains all of these methods for all of the different examples I showed early at the beginning of the video where we went through the example to bubble to showcasing. So the constructor just returns the model, takes in some parameters here, like you can instantiate a text input dot new telling it, you know, this is going to be a text input type functionality. You can add focus, character limit, the width, and then you're going to put in and return the model here. Next, you can have an init method. This is just basically a simple method that T expects to begin the functionality of the model or of the text input in this case. And then we have the update and view methods. Now update is basically a real time callback that updates the value they're doing. So because it's text input, every time I type on my keyboard, what I want to provide my CLI is going to take that and update the method that we see. And the view method, this is the most interesting one. This is basically the renderer of what we're using and what we're seeing. This renders out the logic from the text input component from the bubble tea framework into something that we can visually see on our CLI. So these are the key methods for any sort of anything you want to implement. Now, how do you implement this back into the root of our application? How do we then see it and add it into our function here? Well, this is where the project name comes into play because again, this is just a placeholder. You can name it whatever you want. However, it does have to have a specific type. It doesn't, it can't just be a string type. Now we're going to actually modify this by bringing in our text input package that we just worked on into our create.go in our CMD package. We go here and type in charm slot, the name of the project or what's you define as a go mod in it. And it's in CMD slash UI slash text input. You can see it's grayed out. So it's imported, but just not used. And then here in our project type name, the thing that we need to focus on is the initialization function. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about how you can actually bring in our text input package and use it and you can actually see when you run this program. So the very first thing you need to do is actually import your package. So I called my go mod charm CLI, it's gonna be under CMD slash UI slash text input, you can see there it's grayed out. And then all I need to do is basically follow what the initialization function here, what my constructor is expecting. Essentially, it's really expecting just a type output struct and a string as the header value. So here, instead of keeping this as a string, like I said, it is a placeholder holder value. What you can actually do is put text input input. And don't forget, we do want this to be a pointer reference because we are going to modify this value. We're not gonna just pass in, uh, you know, just a copy value like Go does. And so here, next thing we're gonna do is just call the initialization 
initialization function. And so now the next thing is we're actually going to declare an option. I'm going to be declaring as an option struct. We're going to instantiate this and just put project name is text input output. There you go. And now it's going to complain it's not being used, but we'll take care of that just in a second. Let me just add some more space here. So we're going to declare something called T program. And this is going to be from the bubble T package T dot new program. And now this will be passed in your constructor method. So you can do text input and there you go. New initial text input model. It's going to expect options dot project name. And then the header, this could be, you know, what is the name of your project? Boom. There you go. It's going to complain that T program is not used. So then you're going to call run and handle the error from T program. So now we have everything to work for our text input method. And now I'm going to show you how it works. To so go ahead and open a terminal, do this. The first thing that you want to do is actually build this. So you can do a go build and then do a go install. You can see here, there's actually a binary file. Now this is going to bind it to your go path. And I think that's the coolest part about CLS. It's always going to need a prefix, something that your CLR recognizes to run the command or add flags to the initial command. And just to give some feedback, if you don't know how to actually run this, look at your root.go when you ran Cobra CLI in it. Whatever command is here is going to be that initial kind of path binding variable to your go path. And then the create here is going to be the command. So it's going to be create. So now I know it's going to be charm CLI create. And what is the name of your project? And here you go. It works how I expect it to. Hi, mom. OK, now we're almost done, but I do really want to showcase the list functionality here as well. Again, you can see go blueprint. We are very heavily involved in the list. I mean, I think it's a great feature. I mean, let's just make everything better. And again, we're just going to follow the documentation here in the example. I think the example from charm on list is actually a little bit over complicated. It does again, like I said, it has the update method, the init method, the view method and the constructor method as well. But I just think they could have done a bit more a simplistic perspective on it. So I'm just going to model it more so towards a text input constructor that we just built. All right, I just pasted a ton of code. It should look fairly similar because again, we're using it the same thing that we did in our text input method here. It just looks a little different because we're handling the list and we're handling options and we want to make sure we render the right thing when the user chooses something. So you can see here we still have that same model. We have a few things added like the cursor, a list of choices. This is something you're going to feed into our initializer, uh, the selected, which is going to be choosing what option that you select, a selection choice and a header, which is just a string. Uh, now, one thing to notice is the selection struct is just a string. It's just something that contains a choice, which is string and it just has this update method, which is kind of similar to what's going on here. We have an output struct with an output method and it just updates the value depending on what your user does. So if you're texting, you're typing, if you're choosing, you're selecting. Now, the update method may look a little different because there's a few things that we kind of have to attribute to, to what the user may do. If they choose to go up, down, enter or select, then we want to handle those cases. You know, if we go up, we want to move our cursor up a selection, down, down the selection. If we click enter, they want to go through. And if we click Y, we want to make sure that our we processed what our user has selected and we make sure we keep that state for us to use throughout our application. And the last is that view. Again, this is just a render method. This is what our usual users will see, but it's important to know how we want to select and how we want to change the option of what our users see. So for example, here, if our cursor is on our option, then we're adding this little arrow here on the box option for our simple list. And if they check it, then we know we want to put an X indicating that they've made their selection on the list that we provide them. All right, so let's head on over back to our create.go. We're almost done, but now we're going to actually populate our list options struct and pass it down to our T program. So I'm just going to make some new lines over here. Let me give myself some space, remove that. All right, and do let's say list of stuff. I don't know. I'm bad with variable names, but you shouldn't be. Spend some time on it. List options and then options I'm gonna be a slice of string. And I'm gonna put, I don't know, uh option one, subscribe to Melky. Don't be cool. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. All right. So now that we've declared our list of stuff, it's basically the exact same thing here. So we're going to put T program. We don't have to redeclare it. It's going to be T new program. So we're going to put in our multi input initial modal multi. And here we're going to put in the, you know, you can see there are choices, which can be list of stuff dot options. We're going to put in our options dot project type. And then just any kind of, you know, string here, we'll just put options. And then the same thing, we'll do some error handling. Let's just take this and paste it here. All right. So now that we have all that written, let's go ahead and run our application. Now you have to remember, you have to rebuild the binary. So go build and install that to bind the latest version to our path and do charm CLI create. So what is the name of your project? I YouTube and then 
options option one subscribe to Melky or don't be cool obviously you want to subscribe to Melky hope you all enjoyed this video I know I didn't go into the details of how I write every single line of code but I more so think it's important to focus on the concepts of what our framework could do you could always watch someone write code and just copy and paste it make sure you comment like and subscribe if you want to see more but I gotta leave you off two things I don't even know what the first one is go build something cool using bubble tea and lip gloss and cobra let me know what it is if it's cool enough I'll make a video about it but if not you got a power.